Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing some cinematic sound design and I decided instead of doing kind of a tutorial video, I'm just going to turn on the camera while I work and explain a little bit of what I'm doing because so much of my content is very structured or educational and sometimes I think it'd be cool to just turn on the camera while I work. So that's what we got going on today. Specifically, I'm going to be making cinematic Brahms, B-R-A-A-M-S in all caps. Um, it's basically like a a synth and a horn and a drum hit and just really like big kind of a it's not a boom it's not a rom but it's a brom <laughs> really hard to explain it's basically a big sound design tool that's often used in like cinematic trailer kind of music and I do a lot of that so eventually I need to start making my own so that I have kind of a unique sound and flavor to my music Basically, my idea for today's session is I want to create a brahm, which is a mixture of a drum hit, a sub bass, a synth, and horns all playing at the same time. But I want to add in some of my own elements and flavors, so I want to try and add some guitars to it and possibly some vocals just to get this massive cinematic blockbuster, like grabs your attention kind of hit. Let's add a software instrument and we'll start with our drum hit layer. So I'm going to go grab, where is it? Where is it? Contact seven in stereo. We're going to go ahead and create that. And we're just looking for just a big hit to start it off. Um, we all know it. We all love it. Damage, one shot and kits. So let's do bad crunch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. So I'm going to go through and just find probably two to three sounds that I want to layer to kind of make the, the punch, like hit you in the face layer. I love that. That's so good. That's pretty good, too. I don't want too much tail on some of this. Mm, we'll have to figure out what note that is if we use that. Let's try that. So for now, we're kind of more sketching and getting, just getting things that are cool, and then I'll worry about the layers and how they fit together later. All right, let's hit that. So there's our drum hit. I'm going to make sure this is quantized right on the beat because when this is all done, we're going to layer them into one contact instrument. So we need them all to hit at the same time. The This one is a little loud, so you can, if you're using damage, you can hit whatever key and then you have some quick controls. So I'm just going to pull it down like maybe 2 dB. Maybe more than that. I'm also going to pull that one down a touch because that's a good, clean, transient. We want that. And maybe one more clean, transient. I like the A. A1. So I'm going to add a note to A1 right there. Great. And I'm going to pull that one down a little more. That's great. Okay. So we're going to start with that. Mm. So there is a pitch. I want to figure out the pitch. We either need to match the rest of our instruments to the pitch of that drum or just not use that drum with the with the really pitched tail. Um, or we can like use the envelope to get rid of the release. I just don't want that low end clashing. So I usually start with Omnisphere for finding cool layers just because it's got so many patches and a great browser. So we're looking for probably a synth bass and we want something aggressive... Um, why don't we do like a disturbing? Okay, we've got a few options here. 
That's cool. Not bad, not bad. I'll give it three stars. I believe that's the pitch of our drum. I'm just going to pull the envelope down on that. Okay, amp envelope. We want sustain and release to come down. You can either just make it a really short tail. Maybe that's what I'll do. That's cool. And you still get the clickies in there. And then I'm going to add a reverb directly to this. We just want a cool space. Oh, that's nasty. I like that. I'm going to roll off some highs. And let's just try the different ones here. Nope, grounded. No, I like airy. So that kind of gives us just a nice tail to it. Uh, and now this whole thing is loud. So I'm going to pull down my output from contact, probably to like minus 10. Uh, we don't want this sound adding up and clipping. Great, so we'll call this drums, and we will come back to that as we go. All right, so since I plan to add vocals to this, I don't want to bottom out my vocal range, so I'm going to make all these sounds in E. Um, that way I just know, like, it's in E, and I know I'll be able to sing, mm -hmm, you know, um, for you vocal people out there. I actually don't like that that much. Maybe let's do more like a suspenseful. Now let's do powerful. Too much. Actually. Oh, that's so sick. Okay. It's very loud. It is so very loud. I don't know why Omnisphere starts so loud all the time. We're not going to worry about bending on these notes because once we kind of print them all to audio and put them in contact, that's when we can do the performance uh, elements of it. It's also very stabby, stabby, stabby. Put a bit of compression on that. Balance it out, tame it a little bit. There it comes. And so I hold the tail a lot longer than I want to because you want more, you want to err on the side of like longer audio files when you're doing this in case you want to hold out a note when you're performing it. So. So I'll kind of blend the volume on those. Let me roll off some super lows because I want like a sub sub, a sub sub, like below the sub sub. Um, but I want those ultra lows to be reserved for the certain really low elements. And then I'm just going to look at kind of the response of this and maybe roll off some highs. It gets a little too uh, crackly. Also, when you get those highs out of the way, you can hear kind of the clicky stuff on the on the drum head. And I'll go ahead and do something like this. Pull a little bit of that out. All right. So we'll call this distorted. Distort bass. So now I want just a really clean sub bass to layer under this. So I'm actually going to go to reactor because I know what I like. <laughs> um, okay, Monarch. So this is just...
right where you want it for a sub bass. Add a little bit of load to it. Because that's just going to... Basically it, I'm going to add, not even going to EQ it actually, just a little bit of compression to kind of balance out those hits, those peaks. So same thing here. I'll just copy this region down. want it to be the super sub lows. Add maybe a little bit of tail to, to this. Cool, like 1.2 seconds. Do the same thing here. Perfect. Sweet. Um, same thing with these. I don't think I want to reverb on the sub. I really just want that to be its own thing. I try to keep my sub bass, like whatever's handling the, just the fundamental, super low, super clean. I try to keep it mono and I try not to delay or reverb it too much because I really just want it to be the sub, just the good, like shake the sub, shake the room kind of low end. So we'll call this sub bass. And I work low to high with my tracks. It's just what I do. Great. Kind of setting a, a rough balance as I go. I'm going to put a little bit of compression on these drums. Just a little bit of polish all the way as we go is good. Um, the next thing you definitely need for Brahms are just brass in general. So I'll go in here, go to contact, and we're just going to put brass. Just good old symphony series brass, brass, just brass. <laughs> Yep, that'll do it. If you look down here, you'll see kind of the range. So I definitely want the lows, but if we can stretch the trombones down there. Yeah, so basically these sections represent what octave that instrument's going to play. So if we look at this low E down here, C1, or E1 rather, I want trombones and tubas down there. We got trombones and tubas up at the next one. And then maybe we'll do horns down to that E if it'll reach. Oh yeah, and then we'll just turn down the horns a little bit because we don't want that top note cutting as much. Um, push the trombones because they have kind of a more aggressive texture. Awesome. And you can go to the mixer here. There's also close mics. Um, so we can add in kind of more of a direct sound versus like the stereo. So we'll add a little bit of close and maybe far would sound cool just to give it like a big. Yeah, a little bit of natural reverb there. All right, I like that. I like that. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and hold this as long as my others. Here we go. Cool. That's great. All I'm going to do is pull down the velocity of that top note to try to quiet it down. And then quantize these locked in right on the grid. Let me mute that top note and see if I like it better. Yeah, 
that's that's it. That's the move right there. So we'll call this brass and we'll give it a little bit of compression and we'll roll off the lows on the EQ. And wherever that good saucy goodness is on the brass, that's where we kind of want to boost. Right there feels kind of just looking for like character or anything like that. Sweet. Uh, more layers. So now I usually like to reinforce the actual brass layer with a synth brass layer. So I'm just going to go looking around. Let's try Omnisphere again. Um, and we could just type brass right here. See what we get. Throwback brass head. Oh, that's fire. I wish I was doing a 90s track right now. That's cool. Oh, that's it. That's so good. I'm going to get rid of the attack because it kind of kind of swells in. So we're going to make that faster. And it's also on the filter. Let's see how we can mess this up with effects. We got a reverb and a chorus. Let's just add in some distortion. Metal zone. Can't go wrong. Oh, yeah. Actually, I don't want it here. I want it on the on the A rack. Let's try a flame distortion. Heat, warm, valve. Oh, look at all those. Toast. That's kind of nasty. and then just blend that in. That's really good. Yes. Okay. So we're going to same thing, put that in there. All right. Again, compress this. EQ it, we're treating those lows. I'm going to turn down that clicky. It's kind of getting on my nerves. Where is it? Nope. Right there. Pull that down a little more. Super creepy. It sounds like one of those weird like sci-fi monsters. Okay, this is synth brass. So this is a really good uh, start to the sound. And now's when we can kind of get into some other colors and textures because this is as far as i'm concerned this is like the base brom sound like any kind of brom has these elements in it and then from here is where we can start to really kind of get get spicy okay so i'm going to first of all save this I usually just save my Brahms in whatever album they're going to be used. So like I have the cinematic two album instruments, instrument setup. So I'll just put it in here and call this a uh, character, character, Brahm. Cool. So now I'll just have a, a session that like where I created this in case I need to go back and make adjustments. Um, so we're going to go change the input device to helix audio i hope this doesn't break my live stream thing not live stream obs switching to my helix this is like the part that will if you're following along or, or making your own brahms adding in your own sound sources are how you're going to differentiate your sounds from other people because most people have damage most people have omnisphere most people have these native instruments tools but Nobody has like the weird <laughs> random stuff you have in your room that you can throw a mic on or record audio from. So I'm a big supporter of tracking the audio. So let's do it. So I'm using a Tele Deluxe on the bridge <laughs> pickup. Uh, it's just a humbucker Tele 
really, if you have a guitar, just just get it. Um, you're just going for an aggressive, like heavy sound. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to smack the strings really hard to get just that, like just nasty. We don't want it to sound like clean and proper, just heavy. So here we go. I'm going to track one. Actually going to maybe extend these. Okay. I'm just going to get one more take of that just in case. Great. I think I like the second one better. Um, so we'll just call this EG1. I'm going to hard pan it, duplicate the track, EG2. I have another preset on my Helix with the same amp setting, just a different cab to give it some, some difference. So same thing. Here we go. Great. I'm going to do one more take just in case. I'm going to highlight these, hit flatten. We're going to fade out probably right there at the fourth bar. Maybe start the fade out like that. We're going to fade these in so we don't have any noise beforehand. Turn that down, blend it in. The one on the left feels louder, so I'm going to increase the clip gain to match it, maybe 2 dB. Great, I'm gonna extend the tails of all these out to about there, cut these, I'm gonna highlight them all, open this up, select all, except for that one, well, whatever. Uh, and we're gonna right click and hit force legato. Where's it at, where's it at, where's it at? I know the hotkey. It's shift and backslash. Shorten. Oh, you're going to ask me this 20 times? Okay. Great. So now we've got longer hits. Um, now I just want to do some like kind of weird sounds maybe. So now comes the annoying guitar sounds time. So I've got a wrench here. Um, it basically acts as a slide and something to like aggravate the strings. So. <laughs> I didn't quite get it started on time. So I'm going to do it again. Killer. It's just annoying. It's texture. It's cool. All the things. Same thing. I'm going to double track it. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. Thank you for joining me on my annoying sounds time. Um, okay. I'm going to flatten that. Same thing. I'm going to kind of tighten up these ins and outs, especially on these because they had an annoying sound before it started. And because I am very particular, these are going to start at the exact same time. Okay. It was still like a, a bit of a sound. Okay. 
Okay, we'll cut these. Start fading them out a little sooner. I'm going to turn these way down. We're going to track stack these into a summing stack. We're just going to annoying EG. And we're going to compress this track stack always. And we're going to EQ it to roll off the lows. And now I'm really going to start to just try to mess this up because we've taken care of all of our fundamentals and now we're just looking for weird stuff. So I had it in my head that I wanted to bit crush this because that sounds fun. That's cool. Oh, that's really cool. the bit crusher I might try something else maybe decapitator that's it <laughs> that's it that sounds incredible okay we're gonna pull down turn off auto pull this down because it's very hot it's very very hot <laughs> I'm going to do the same processing on this set of guitars. We'll call that the note EG. And okay, I'm going to just copy all this over. The reason I'm not using ROM as a send is because I'm going to start printing all this audio um, to kind of flatten it down and, and merge all the effects in. So I want individual ROMs on each one. Also, it's just going to make it sound that much bigger to have like different stuff happening. And some of you may say that it'd be better to have it in the same room and that's possible too. So I might go back and add a room reverb to everything, but okay. That's really good. Oh my gosh. So now with everything, here's kind of our sound so far. I'm gonna add a ROM to this because the more the merrier. Brass. That's pretty cool. I want some grit on the brass. So instead of using decapitator, I'm going to mess around with some other stuff and see what we can find. I don't use this one often, but it might be just the right kind of fun stuff. because I really want to preserve the horn sound, if that makes sense. Like these sound like horns, the other stuff sounds like noise, so. But like a little bit of grit never hurt anybody. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm gonna copy this same processing over the devil lock and the ROM. 
I'm gonna give that more, cause why not? And pull it down, it's getting loud. To add some darkness to this one would be cool. Somewhere in the middle there. All right, let's hear this so far. That's really cool. Okay. Um, kind of pulling down some of my more distorted stuff. Okay, you might think, wow, that sounds great. Let's put it in a song. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Um, I'm going to add vocal layers now. Bear with me. <laughs> okay, we're on the move here. I am going to track some vocals. Uh, I figured this was better than staring at my side. <laughs> I'm going to add in some audio tracks um, for the vocals. I'll probably do like four to six layers of vocals. Oh, oh, oh. Just going to make some silly, silly vocals here. Oh, oh. going to do the octave down. Cool. Hopefully it was uh, in focus for all of that. Okay. So all these vocals, click that so they're a little bigger. I'm going to set all these levels to be the same and I'm going to hard pan them. <clears throat> and let's just see what we got. This is fun. We're having a good time. Cool. So I'm going to kind of clean up the entrance to this just like I did with the other stuff. For the lows, I might mess around with auto tune. So we want low male, we want key of E. A major is fine. Um, retune speed. We want it to feel somewhat natural. Let's see how that feels. Oh. Oh. We're not going for good. I'll say it again. We're not going for good. We are going for cool and textury and really neat. Um, so what I'm going to do, this feels weird. I'm going to put it in the key of D because if you look at a scale, there's a half step right under E, right? You go to E to E flat or D sharp or whatever. Um, and so sometimes it's better to have your tuning be between two whole steps because then it won't go there. Um, so I'm going to go, where, do, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? The little keyboard thing, advanced. And we are going to bypass E, no, remove. We don't want tuning there. We just really want it on E. So great. Natural vibrato will take it out. Let's see how this feels. just silly um okay let's get rid of that i'm gonna take that auto tune that we just set up and put it on the other four low octaves put him back to hard panned let's check that out let's blend these the highs were a lot louder gonna highlight all of these add some compression and some EQ to roll off the lows. Sweet. I also want to clean up the end of this tail. So I'll come maybe right here, cut them all, delete that, and start to fade them out earlier so they don't kind of start to trickle away. Great. Uh, I'm going to track stack all of these, summing stack, 
just call this Vox. You guessed it, compression. And let's see what we can do to make these more exciting. Maybe some ROM again. I've been having a good time with ROM. Let's just check that so far. I feel like that'll give us some more direction. That's a really cool texture. I'm going to add some saturation. Let's try Saturn this time. That's pretty cool. I'm going to make this sound as much like a horn as possible, just because I think that's fun. <laughs> Give it some highs there. That's incredible. Um, I'm going to start to collapse this down and load it into a contact instrument. So what I need to do now is everything that goes to a stereo out, all of this, let's send it to a bus, bus 20. This is the workaround since I'm having trouble bouncing. So we'll call this Brahm bus. And we're going to just record it. So audio track whatever, create it. Let's see if that works. We'll get all that tail. Stop it about here. So we'll call this Brom export and so now we should have an audio file called brahm export in theory we don't i don't know what i'm doing okay let me just solo up you and i'm going to bounce you don't include the tail so we'll call this brahm export So now we should be able to, well, first let me check that it bounces, Brom export. This should be exactly the same thing that I just bounced. Yes, it is. It does look like it. So let me solo it up. We'll just confirm that this sounds right. Sweet. So now I'm going to mute all this stuff. And we're not done yet. Got to shorten this up. We really don't want much of an intro to it, much of a lead in, whatever you want to call it, because right when we hit the key in contact, we're going to want to have it do things. So now I'm going to do some more compression. This time I'm going to really go for it, though. I'm going to do the SSL comp. That's a lot. I want 30, so I get that punch. That's great. Maybe a little bit more compression. 
We can do any number of things now. We could do another ROM if we wanted. We could do some EQ and kind of tone shaping. So I'm going to add in Shep 73. This is kind of one of my favorite, just quick color EQs. Add some top into it. Kind of like that thickness of 700 and we'll add in some, maybe some 60. Sweet, and why not juice the preamp? That's getting loud, so we're gonna pull down the output, maybe 3 dB. And then let's add a ROM. I'm gonna use a preset this time because I've done the basic a lot. We want large, a dark impact. That sounds cool. Not bad, not bad. Really gives it a nice texture. I'm gonna pull out some makeup gain because this keeps getting louder. Pull down some more sheps and then why not distort the whole thing? Uh, we'll do decapitator. We don't want too much here because we're doing it to everything. Pull down the output of this a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna bounce this out and we'll call this Brom Final. Cool, so now I'm gonna go ahead and mute that. I'm gonna create a new track, software instrument, and we're going to add contact. We're gonna do, just go over to rack view, hello, close the library, go to rack view. So empty instrument here, and we're just gonna to navigate to our audio file, instruments, character brom, brom final, and just drag it in there. So we need to go into setup and tell it, mapping editor, tell the root key we want it to be E. That way it all kind of lines up on the keyboard. From there, there's a couple things we can do. We can add in a reverb right on the thing here. That sounds cool. Nope, it's not cool. Insert effects, okay. There we go, reverb. Look, we got ROM. <laughs> so what we want now, it takes me a second to find it. Definitely need some high cut on this one. It's fun. Okay, so we need instrument options. No. Group editor. No. We need. Let's add, I think it's a filter. Filter, 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 filter. Uh, low pass. Uh, I think a four pole. And you can right click on this, learn MIDI CC automation and touch your mod wheel. There it is. 
A little too much resonance. So that's basically how I'd make a Brahm from start to finish. And then you can save this file, save as edited instrument, sure. And then you could put the same thing, this NKI somewhere. I sometimes I'll just put it right in here. Um, great. Just save it right in there. And then I also like to save a multi just in case. And we'll call this brass final that way I don't know which one it needs but then I got both um, so then you can close this and that's about it then you can load up that contact in any session any trailer music track you're working on pull it up and it's a playable instrument as opposed to a sample you can drop in I hope that was helpful I don't know how much of this I'll end up using but I just wanted to turn on the camera while I worked and make a cool sound if you have any questions on what I did in this video you can let me know down in the comments or if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session to learn more about Logic Pro composing or mixing sound design you name it I'll have a link down in the description thanks so much for watching and make sure you like and subscribe